Boston. But tonight, it all begins in the Eastern Conference as the Indiana Pacers take on the Boston Celtics. And the Celtics, folks, are up to 10-point favorites in Game 1. You don't see this a lot in the Conference Finals, but that's where we're at. Total of 220-and-a-half as Boston takes on Indiana. Naturally, the Celtics are heavily favored not just to win this series, but also to win the NBA championship and Jalen Brown, one of their star players talks about what the mentality will be as they get ready to take on Indiana. I think bothers me most. Cause I think really majority of it is just navigating the motion, like just being able to stay consistent. You know, you're going to make shots, you're going to miss shots. That's a part of it. But if you allow the pressure to kind of get to you, get to you, the tension builds, you know, you hear the crowd go, Oh, every time you miss, you know, I think that just builds up and it gives the team momentum. Like you just got to stay, navigate your emotions and, and, and take it one possession at a time. And I feel like you'll always have a chance to win if you don't get caught up in the emotion of the game, the emotion of the crowd, or the emotion of the media or whatever it goes. Just come out, play each and every possession with the, the best intentions possible. Um, come ready to fight um, every single night, every single possession. And I feel like you'll be in a good spot. Um, so I, that's what I say to my team. Just Let's just navigate our emotions as best we can. Again, Boston 10-point favorites going into this game tonight. Meanwhile, a very big uh, piece of news here coming from the college football world. Uh, Georgia's quarterback, Jalen Rashada, who used to play for the University of Florida, announced that he is suing the Gators and suing Florida coach Billy Napier and also a booster named Hugh Hathcock and a former staffer named Marcus Castro Walker, folks. And the reason he's suing them is he says that he wasn't paid on his NIL deal that was hypothetically set to pay, folks, get this, $13.85 million in an NIL deal to a college athlete. Now, folks, we have not heard a lot of finances ever being thrown around like this. And now we know what the universities potentially have at least offered to pay. Now, this also features an SEC quarterback suing a sitting rival head coach. It's the most notable NIL-related lawsuit to date. And the uh, basically the lawsuit says essentially that the Gators, Florida, my home school, uh, and I'm an alumni of the Gators, <laughs> had no intention of following through on their financial promises. Rashada is also claiming that Napier and Hathcock never had any intention of paying the money, but had great intentions to say that he would. Of course, he is playing for the Bulldogs now, and Kirby Smart, the head coach there, gave him his blessing. So stay tuned <laughs> to see what happens here in this crazy wild, wild west of NIL deals. All right, the NHL. Got what they wished for, I think. Connor McDavid, moving on. I think that's probably fair. They wanted Edmonton to win, right? 3-2 to two, the final there. Canucks had a tough time, and Edmonton moves on to the Western Conference Finals to take on Dallas. As I mentioned, a huge series involved for Connor McDavid, who is arguably one of the faces, if not the face, of the National Hockey League. And it was really all about just holding serve in the third. And Connor McDavid, after the game, talked about shutting Vancouver down. Yeah, I thought we played really well. You know, obviously the kill steps up with another huge one. Um, they've been great all, all playoffs long. And, um, you know, starts with the kill there in the middle of the period. And, um, you know, we did a good job of just kind of rolling lines and, you know, killing the clock and keeping them to the outside. And it's going to get interesting eventually. Um, you know, it just is there. They're playing for their life. It's gonna. They're, they're pushing hard. They're sending everyone um, every time. And um, I thought we did a great job of, you know, bending but not breaking. Yeah, and Connor McDavid, in fact, moving on. We're gonna move ahead now. By the way, from the NHL to Major League Baseball. I don't know if you caught some of the action last night, but a very disappointing. I would say day for the San Diego Padres. Let's just get real. Xander Bogarts, who they paid a ton of money, left with a shoulder injury. He has not been the same since going to San Diego from Boston. Too early to tell if he'll head to the IL. But Bogarts hurt for the Padres last night. Also, Rafael Devers. Nobody hotter in baseball than him right now. Six consecutive game homering. That's a Red Sox record. Five nothing win over Tampa Bay. Devers had shared the mark of five with Jimmy Fox, Hall of Famer, Ted Williams, Hall of Famer, Jose Canseco, not a Hall of Famer, <laughs> and some others, George Scott, Dick Stewart, Bobby Dahlback. He's the first major leaguer to do it uh, since the Angels' Mike Trout had a seven-game streak 
in September of 2022. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Twins, all those good vibes are gone. What happened? They won seven in a row. Now they lost seven in a row. Rocco Baldelli called a players only meeting yesterday. Twins have been just really inconsistent up and down all year long. Garrett Cole expected to face hitters today. Another step in his recovery from nerve inflammation. The Yankees have certainly held it together without him. He's been very durable through the years, making 30 starts in every season since 2017, except for 2020. And Cole could potentially return sometime in June or July. National Basketball Association handing out more awards. The all-rookie first team was determined yesterday. No surprise here. Victor Wembayama, Chet Holmgren, among some of the names, including Brandon Miller of the Hornets as well. Meanwhile, LeBron James is reportedly not involved in the Lakers' next head coach, according to Stadium. LeBron has made it clear that it is the organization's decision. He is not pushing for his podcast partner, J.J. Redick. At least that's what he says. The New York Liberty win again. They're undefeated. 74-63 to is the win yesterday. Sabrina Ionescu, 20 points as the Liberty beat the Storm. And meanwhile, the beat goes on in a negative way for the Indiana Fever. And Kaitlin Clark, they lost again. This time to the Connecticut Sun. They haven't won a game on the season. Clark was uh, pretty good from the field. Five from 11. Uh, 17 points, but they play Seattle next. That's probably their most winnable game left, uh, you know, since the schedule has begun. Seattle's one and three on the year, several games in the WNBA tonight, including Washington and LA. That's supposed to be a tight game from what I hear. All right. National Football League, Justin Jefferson, not at Vikings OTA, supposedly looking for a new contract extension. Of course, AJ Brown got a big deal, three years, 96 million. And, uh, you know, Jefferson wants to be the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. He probably should be. T. Higgins also not expected to sign the tender for the Cincinnati Bengals before OTAs. No word on what will end up happening with him. May 28th through May 30th, June 3rd through 6th are the OTAs in the National Football League. How about the good news for North Carolina as their sports handle in wagering has spiked in a big way? In March, the gross wagering revenue, $66 million dollars. Incredible number for them, 18% tax rate as well. April, $105 million, even ahead of college basketball as well. So North Carolina, definitely off to a good start. Also, how about this? A former Toledo assistant is suing Toledo for a lawsuit against the university, alleging that he was fired due to both his age age and race, seeking more than $10 million in damages. So a subsequent conversation in the complaint was uh, deemed to be retaliation and even some sexual harassment allegations involved as well. So stay tuned to that story, no doubt.